So we started this project as a result of a number of conversations and discussions, which really happened after we'd finished and published on how we had involved people on our in our review. And what you can see on the slide here is really a summary of, of the background and, and the main aim of the active project. So just thinking in the way of, of background, I think um, there really is widespread agreement that involving people is beneficial to research, including systematic reviews. And despite this, although consumers have been part of Con Cochrane right from the start and that their involvement is very much thought to be helpful, there is evidence that the roles of Cochrane consumers within Cochrane are sometimes a bit limited, especially when we're talking about involvement in an individual review. And then we all felt that there really isn't any easy source um, of evidence or resources about actually the practicalities of how you involve people in reviews. So we may all agree it's a good thing, but actually what do you go out and do? So our aim with um, ACTIVE was then to help review authors to find a way of having meaningful involvement in their reviews. And just thinking of that question, it wasn't that we were specifically thinking it had to be the review authors doing everything. One of the ways of helping review authors may be working with the editorial teams as well. So our plans in terms of to try and achieve this aim was, was first to find out the different ways that people have in been involved in systematic reviews. Now we're doing this with a traditional literature and database searching, although it is actually very difficult to find examples of involvement because of the way it's reported or rather the way it's not reported. So we're supplementing this with trying to find out examples of involvement through other routes, so we're using social media, following up on, on people who've um, published in this area, people we know, contacts. So if you are sitting there and you've got examples of where people have been involved, then please do let us know because we are aware of lots of good stuff that happens that doesn't get published. Once we have um, collated as many examples as we can, then what we're planning to do is to bring this all together. So information in terms of descriptions of the practical aspects of how people were involved in these different examples. We're hoping to try and compile materials um, relating to those examples. So practical things such as um, the information sheets, the ethics applications, maybe we could have things such as meeting agendas. Possibly these could be things that the authors and other teams could start to use as templates for their involvement. And then we're also planning um, to do some interviews. We know that there will be examples of involvement which haven't been published and for which there isn't existing written, in, written information. Or perhaps there is a little bit of written information, but it doesn't give a rich description of actually what happened in practice. Uh, so we are keen to do a number of interviews with either um, the people who've led these projects or people who've been involved as users. Um, we're going to do these over Skype and we're going to record them um, so we can compile them within the resources we're building up. So again, if this is something that you feel you could help us with, then please do let us know. Um, and if you would be happy to be interviewed and share your experiences, then we're really keen to speak to you. Once we have um, compiled all this, what we're planning to do is then to make it um, available online as part of Cochrane Training Online Learning Resources. So there's a relatively um, small group of us in, involved in terms of the sort of day-to-day -day management of the project, but actually we want this to be a project that anyone can be involved in. So we are, as I'm sort of rather repeating myself, but we do want to know about your own um, examples of involvement and if people do want to contribute either in providing uh, examples or in any other way then we really do encourage you to get in touch with us um, and that would be fantastic. So really just following on from that um, and thinking about what our aims of ACTIVE uh, are, we thought we would just run another poll to talk about what sort of resources you would like within this online resource. You all agreed in the last poll that you think it would be good to have resources. So actually, what would you like um, like to see? What would be helpful to you? I'll hand over to you, Chris, to do that poll. Okay, just give it a few minutes, a few moments. I can see 
There's quite a bit to read there for people. Okay, I'm going to close that poll now if everybody's had a chance to contribute. Okay, I'll just read out the results of that then. Um, so 71% said you would like real life examples of involvement, 54% personal stories about involvement, 89%, so this is the biggest one, practical templates for planning involvement. I would have loved to have had those. Um, 54% guidance on reporting, 68% uh, tools to measure impact. Uh, that they're all over 50%, I think, I guess, to me, gives me um, encouragement that we're possibly heading in the right direction. We are thinking about things that um, people think will be useful. Um, so that's actually really nice to have that feedback. Thank you. So moving on then and back to our plan. I've given you um, a brief introduction to the active project, but what I'd like to do now is to test out some of our initial thoughts about how we're practically going to bring some of this information together. So this is the part of the webinar when it would be really helpful for us if we could have some constructive feedback. Um, so if, as I'm talking, you've got thoughts, then please just um, use the chat function and say if things don't make sense or if you disagree with what we're suggesting or if you've got any thoughts or questions. What we've got at the moment is most definitely not set in stone. This is very early thoughts um, and I suspect that they'll continue to evolve and change in quite a, a large way. So when we started thinking about bringing together all these examples of involvement and we started really thinking about, about how we could do this in a systematic and, and meaningful way, we realised that there were all sorts of different levels of details that we were going to need to extract and present. So what we are doing at the moment from our examples is that we're, we're bringing together information on practical things as whether, whether um, other examples have whether they've got ethical approval, whether they've paid participants, how the participants were recruited, as well as then the sort of practical de descriptions of what happened. So the sort of things I talked about in terms of mine, when were the meetings, how long were the meetings, how many people attended the meetings. We haven't, of course, got time to go through everything today. Uh, but what I would want to concentrate on just now is the the components that we think are going to be really central um, to how we're going to be able to bring this together and, and try and make this information accessible and, and useful and usable. So what I'm going to talk about uh, is these three issues. We're going to talk about who is involved and how we describe that, when the involvement occurs within the process, and then how much involvement there is. Because at the moment, the way our thoughts are is that these three things are really going to be central to how we're going to pull this together. Um, so starting with thinking about who is involved. How we describe who is involved is actually a surprisingly thorny and contentious issue and not one that within the active project we're attempting um, to address. What you see on the screen now is Cochrane's definition of consumer. So this definition really primarily includes patients and their, their carers or family members. But even within Cochrane, um, the use of the term consumer can vary quite considerably and other people can come into this. If you look up definitions of public involvement or PPI, patient and public involvement, you find other definitions which start to bring in other groups of people as well. So what you see on the screen now is the definition which involve, which is a UK based public involvement organisation. That's their um, definition, which is a bit wider than the definition of consumer. However, involve also point out that they think it's really important that we recognise the difference between the perspectives of patients and the public and the perspectives of health professionals. Um, the reference to the involved paper there, um, which is at the bottom, uh, Chris is going to email that out to all of you who are attending the webinar when the webinar finishes, so you can have a look at that if you're interested in, in reading more about that. 
If you then look at, at other terms, so there's terms that are used such as stakeholders and citizens, then the definitions can start to get even wider. They can include health professionals, policy makers. Um, again, the reference here can be emailed out at the end. So, as I said, within the active project, we're not aiming or attempting to help find on the best term to use. That's not the aim of our project. But what we did need to do for our project was to have a clear definition and have terms that we have that we use consistently without within the project. So what we have decided to do that will is have a very wide definition of stakeholder. So really thinking about this being as anyone whose job is not directly in, in research. So this covers a whole host of people. However, when we're going to be presenting examples and information within the learning resource, we will make sure that we're describing who the stakeholders are, so using the sort of terms that you see on the slide now. And we'll also make sure that we are highlighting if there's a subgroup of consumers in terms of patients, carers and family members. Or perhaps, actually more importantly, we'll highlight if there's not consumer involvement. We certainly have found so far a number of examples where there is stakeholder involvement, but that group of stakeholder doesn't consume, uh, doesn't include that subgroup of consumers. So that is sort of our, our plan in, in terms of how we'll go about describing the who. Um, so then moving on to think about when involvement occurs. Um, well, very conveniently, just at the start of our project, Cochrane brought out this new infographic, which is to describe various processes and mechanisms within Cochrane. The bit that was interesting to, uh, to us was this purple circle in the middle um, labelled process, because that details 11 stages associated with completing a Cochrane review. So rather than us literally reinventing the wheel, we realised that this infographic gave us a really effective way of seeing when there was involvement within a review. So what we plan to do is to map the examples that we have to these 11 different stages. So perhaps we might have one review um, which brings together a group of people who work on, on the selection of studies, so that would be stage six. We might find another example um, where a consumer comes along and helps in writing a lay summary, so that would be stage 11. So what we're going to do is to link all our different examples that we find uh, to these 11 stages and within those show the different sorts of ways that people have been, been involved at each of those different stages. However, things are never as easy as, as you want them to be. When we started exploring the different published examples that we'd found, we realised that there are actually some very distinctively different ways um, that people get involved in relation to this when question. So sometimes you have a model where people have been involved continuously throughout the review. So this might be because uh, you have a consumer who is a, an author or a grant holder and they really have a bit more of a management role in terms of the review. Or this might be because there's been an advisory group or an advisory panel set up um, to monitor things throughout the whole review. So again, this group might have a bit more of an oversight type function to the review. But then a lot of the examples that we're finding are actually just providing one-time involvement. So this might be a, a one-off public event or a one-off stakeholder meeting. Or it might just be the involvement of one individual person to do a specific task. So in this way, the, the role of the person or the people involved is much more responsive. They're responding to a, a specific task, a specific stage in the review process. Now, those two categories themselves don't actually um, still cover the, the whole story because we've also found lots of examples of lots of things so multiple time involvement is what we're calling this. So this is where you have one group of people who actually come along and they have input at different stages within the review process, but they're not continually involved necessarily. And then finally, of course, you can have a combination of this. And really, our review is a good example of this. So our 
uh, stakeholder group did have a continuous sort of oversight role, so they were involved throughout the whole period of the review, but then we had three, so multiple time meetings, each of which had a very specific focus. So we are I'm going to use both of these tools, the 11 stages and then these different terminologies to really try and describe when people are involved in the different examples that we find. Which then brings us on um, to how much involvement do people have. Now right from the start we were really keen on the idea of trying to use some sort of continuum to grade the level of involvement that's happening within these reviews. And what you see on your screen now is a, a nice coloured scale of temperature and another one of wavelength. So we were aware that there are lots of scales that provide a nice coloured continuum. And there's actually nothing on those scales to say that one end is better or worse than another. One end's hotter and one end's colder, but actually there's no judgement um, to what the good end of those scales is. So we were quite keen to do this um, for involvement. We knew that we weren't going to have at this stage, or we were very unlikely to have evidence to say that one end of this continu continuum or the other end was more effective than the other. But what we wanted to do is have a way that we could start to map and show how different levels of involvement can occur at different points in the review process. So what we've been doing um, is we've spent quite a lot of time looking at all the different terminology and definitions that other people have used, and we've spent a lot of time digging into these descriptions of, of how people have been used, and that has led us to come up with this sort of draft active continuum of involvement. So you'll see down the left-hand side we've got a number of different terms, but possibly more useful is the, the middle column and the right-hand column where we're really trying to describe what's happening in terms of practicalities. So if somebody was involved, obviously, as a review author, then they're up at the top, they've got a level of control. In our example, we gave our group devolved control over a number of decisions, so that's sort of at the level of devolved user control. In another example, you might have a group that comes along and contributes to data analysis. We've got um, examples from qualitative uh, syntheses where people come along and help with the coding of qualitative data. So again, this is at the level of, of collaboration, with, but there's really quite explicit involvement in the decision making. We can we find examples where there's an advisory group. Um, and they're involved in decision making, but it's a bit more implied. You can't quite see a direct route from what the advisory group members are saying um, to the decisions that are made by the review authors. And then you come down to a level more of consultation, and review authors often go out and they gather information relating to their review. And again, there's not necessarily a direct transparent path from that, those consultation events to what happens in the review but it's something that the review authors may quite find very valuable in terms of them focusing the review. And then right at the bottom we get into the stage where actually the people involved may be classed more as participants in research, um, possibly they're participants within a qualitative research project which is aligned in some way to the review. So for example a qualitative research project looking at research priorities so you can have um, a focused research question to start your review. I appreciate that's quite a lot to, to take in all at once, um, but this gives us our, our third way that we're going to start trying to um, map things together. Now, I'll warn you that the next slide I've got is um, very messy um, because we want to just try and show you how we're, we're where, we're where we're at just now. So what you see on the slide just now is um, Along the top, you see the 11 stages um, of when people might be involved within a review. So that comes from the Cochrane infographic. And then down the side, you see our continuum of involvement. And what we're in the process of doing now is mapping where we have some real examples with good descriptions of what happened at these different stages in terms of the review and different levels of involvement. Uh, well, at the moment, we, we've got 19 
19 reviews that we found that have really got some quite good descriptions of involvement. So the mapping that we've done so far is based on these 19 reviews. The slightly more thin lined faces, I'm not sure if you can distinguish the difference, but the thin happy faces um, are where we've just found one example of involvement at that level. And then the slightly thicker happy faces, that probably doesn't sound quite right, but the, the thicker lined happy faces are where we have found multiple examples of people being in, involved at that level and at that stage of the review. So at a glance of looking at this, you can see that we found quite a few examples of people being involved in stages one to three of a review in those initial stages of developing the question, planning the methods, writing the protocol. But we've definitely found less examples within stage um, four to seven and much less um, in stage eight, which is about assessing risk of bias. We've only found one review um, where people have been involved at a sort of consultation type level within at the stage of assessing risk of bias. And then as you get towards the final stages of the review, there are again, we've found some more examples, um, but possibly not up at that level of devolved control. So we've got people involved, but maybe not um, at such a high level. So each of the examples that we're now mapping into the different cells within this table, we will then describe in more detail. So for example, we'll describe um, whether that meeting, that involvement occurred at a meeting or whether it was by some other method. And we'll talk about whether uh, there were any formal research method, methods, so things such as the normal group technique, the Delphi approach has been used, whether any system of voting has been used in terms of decision making. Um, and we'll try and, and bring that together and tell the story of the practical aspects of involvement at the different stages. So I do hope that makes sense. We were keen to try and show you the direction that we're heading just now, but I hope you understand that we've got a vast amount of information and we're trying to pull it all together into one slide. Um, within the online learning resource, I don't think you'll be seeing it all as one slide, but this is us trying to manage this information um, at the stage that we're at just now. So I'm going to stop um, sort of talking about what we've, we've done so far just now um, and really hand back over to you. You'll have seen that there were a number of complete gaps in the chart I was showing you and we suspect that there are people out there who would be able to tell us about examples of people being involved in those different stages. Um, so what we're going to do now is do another poll and actually ask you, um, the people listening, whether you have examples that you would be able to tell us about, about involvement of stakeholders in any of these different stages in the review. So this is our, our final multi-choice question. I'll just hand over to Chris um, to set that up. Okay, Ruby, yeah, that poll's live. I can see some people are voting now. So just give you all a few moments to read that and contribute. I can see also we've got a we got a number of questions coming through as well. So Alex, I, I'm imagining we can take questions after this poll. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. That's the stage we're at. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Fantastic. Okay. Just one or two more moments in case anybody wants to add anything here. Okay. And I'm going to close that poll. That's the results, Alex. There you go. <clears throat> Okay, thanks, Chris. Uh, right, so we've got quite a few people. Actually, this is it's interesting because it's mirroring what we found in our diagram. So we've got um, people, 33% of people saying that they uh, have got examples at the stage of developing question planning methods and writing and publishing protocol. Fewer, so just 11% um, have responded for those middle questions. And then we've got 28% saying they've got examples of interpreting findings and writing and publishing review. And that is really interesting because it, it really completely reflects what we found in terms of published information as well. Uh, if, if you are somebody who's, who's um, 
given us and you've ticked to say you do this, especially those of you who are ticking in the middle, then please, please do email us and let us have your email so we can get in touch because we genuinely want to try and um, get these examples. So if you've got an example, we would really, really be keen um, to include it.